you look around the world throughout Earth's history, mm -hmm. every time you see a very large basaltic lava flow, mm -hmm. and some of them can be almost as large as the United States, mm -hmm. every time you see one of these flows, you see major warming, major ocean acidification, major mass extinction. So there's this close correlation in time between large fields of basalt and sudden changes in climate. Right. And it turns out these are the things we as geologists have, have been mapping uh, throughout the last uh, several hundred years. Sudden changes in climate and sudden changes in life forms that we call sedimentary layers. But it has yes. It has nothing to do with global warming either. This is just, this is just um, a national phenomenon that we all that we do have within within centuries and and uh, and um, many many uh, hundred of millions of years. This has been going on for a long long time, and and we're just now realizing that. But again, we're still trying to blame on global warming. It has nothing to do with global warming. It's just do with um, uh, with with atmosphere change that you're talking about. Well, what I've observed is that global warming was caused from 1970 to 1998 mm -hmm. by these CFC gases. It was caused by man, and man stopped it. Well, that's true. Global warming from 2014 to 2016 mm -hmm. was caused by a big basaltic volcano in Iceland. Right. The biggest basaltic eruption since 1783. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, in two years, the world warmed five times faster than it had warmed from 1970 to 1998. Mm -hmm. And this was the result of that eruption. Right. And then throughout geologic time, as I say, whenever we saw global warming, we saw these kinds of volcanic eruptions. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, I can now show that it is physically impossible for greenhouse warming theory to explain global warming. Mm -hmm. it, it turns out there was a fundamental error made in how we calculate heat. And the result of this error is that the climate models overestimate the effect of greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. But when we step back from all that, we can say it's physically impossible for greenhouse gases to cause global warming. Mm -hmm. Because what greenhouse warming theory assumes mm -hmm. is that radiation from Earth absorbed by greenhouse gases mm -hmm. causes the warming. Well, it's physically impossible for any body of matter to be heated by its own radiation. Uh -huh. If that were possible, things would self-ignite. Things would self-heat. Mm -hmm. We know that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's physically impossible for a body of matter to be heated by its own radiation. Mm -hmm. Greenhouse warming theory assumes that Earth is mm -hmm. warmed by mm -hmm. uh, greenhouse gases absorbing Earth's radiation. Mm -hmm. And also, well, one of the biggest things that we're scared of right now, um, because Yellowstone is way overdue to have a major eruption, and that would definitely um, have with the same same cause effect um, as with the dinosaurs got extinct. And now that's just coming out just lately in the last couple of years. But uh, again, they don't know exactly what's, when the rule were due by 100 million years so far. So 100,000 years, as I say, we're 100,000 years overdue for Yellowstone to be uh, erupted. But we still don't know what the um, what exactly what that's going to do when that actually when actually it, it, um, it uh, explodes. So we don't know. We just don't know what the, what the what we do know that the food chain will definitely be effective. We know that 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 much. It'll be uh it'll be a frozen period about the ice age. But do we know exactly how how much? of the atmosphere is going to be affected by that. We just don't know. And nobody knows until actually when it happens. And how many of us will survive well, that? Well, I live within 75 miles of Yellowstone. Oh, wow. Um, I've studied volcanoes all my life. Mm -hmm. I know most of the scientists that study volcanoes. Mm -hmm. 
it's very clear to us that a major eruption of Yellowstone is highly unlikely in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say it can't happen, but it's highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about volcanoes is that when they begin to be active, there are earthquakes, there's ground deformation. That's correct. There are things we can measure and observe that tell us this volcano is becoming active. Mm -hmm. We need to look at it more carefully. It might erupt. Mm -hmm. And we've been quite successful, actually, at, at predicting eruptions. Yeah, you have. Pinatubo eruption in 1991 was predicted, uh, and people were moved out of the area in time so that the life loss was, was much less than what could be expected. Mm -hmm. We're never quite sure when a volcano is warming up if it will erupt, but we, we have a scale that goes from green to yellow to orange mm -hmm. to red that makes it, says it's more and more dangerous. And we're doing very well with pointing out which volcanoes are very dangerous. Oh, uh, I have a question for you. going on all the time. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, since you know about dangerous volcanoes, Mount Fuji is very, very dangerous because it's right now, it's hot. Uh, Japan itself, 32 million people live in Japan right now. And that's a big, big population. The biggest population in the world. 32 million people live in one city. Imagine that. 32 million people live in one city. And having Mount Fuji being erupted, that would be a big, big uh, disaster. It would be. Well, there are many volcanoes in, in Japan that could erupt. Uh -huh. And if they were a major eruption, yes, it would have a very serious significant mm -hmm. effect. I mean, we have right here in the United States, we have volcanoes that could erupt. Mount Ma Ma Rainier. Mount Ma Rainier, uh, yeah. Is, uh, uh, certainly not an inactive volcano. It yeah, it's dormant. Erupt. And if it did erupt, major mud flows uh, would come down on Seattle and all the towns between Seattle and... and uh, Absolutely. Mount and glaciers. Glaciers. They got... That, that Mount Rainier is filled with glaciers. Some of them go up to four miles thick. Yes. The, uh, no, the glaciers are... The glaciers, if they suddenly melt, would cause major mud flows, would cause major loss of life. Absolutely. Mount Lassen, Mount Lassen in California is is one of concern. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mount St. Helens erupted in, in uh, 80. Um, in, in southern Washington, and we know that was an issue. Mm -hmm. I was the first one to actually put instruments on Lassen, uh, St. Helens, Rainier, and Baker mm -hmm. back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. to record earthquakes to see how active they would be. Mm -hmm. Now all of those volcanoes are monitored regularly, mm -hmm. um, and scientists uh, can see if there's any change and can give early warning if there's any change. Yep. Right they now, in the Aleutian Islands, Mount Benyaminov uh, has been puffing uh, ash into the, into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about the Aleutian Islands is they are all volcanic islands, and they could have major eruptions. But that's where most of the airplanes fly that are going to Japan and to Asia from mm -hmm. North America. Mm -hmm. They go right down the Aleutian Islands. So the U.S. Geological Survey has a major program in Anchorage of monitoring those volcanoes and issuing alerts for pilots flying over the, over the Aleutian Islands. Well, that's good. 